Alberto, thank you for choosing this title for me. So I've been thinking about how to, um, what do I press here? Oh, here it is, right behind you. Okay. So this is a title that was chosen for me. These are my disclosures. Okay, so I represent the Osteoarthritis Research Society International, but not necessarily in this talk. Our field has mostly concentrated on articular cartilage. It's rather like losing your car keys in the cold and the rain, but looking for them indoors just because it happens to be warm and light. We know that the disease has an impact on articular cartilage, but the driver is not necessarily in the articular cartilage itself. So we really need to think about the synovium. More recently, in the last 10 years, especially since the publication of this review by Jeremy Salam and Francis Berenbaum, the role of synovitis has really uh, been highlighted in the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis because there's good evidence that cartilage and synovium talk to each other in osteoarthritis as well. So this crosstalk is a subject of very uh, important research. Obviously, the tissue that we mostly study in our community is articular cartilage, but there's communication between cartilage and the synovium through a number of mediators produced by cytokines, uh, by chondrocytes, including cytokines and chemokines, nitric oxide, prostaglandin E2, and a whole variety of systemic adipokines, or even adipokines that might come from the infrafatella pad. In addition, you have the degradation products of the extracellular matrix, as a consequence of MMP and ADAMTS action on the extracellular matrix. And these uh, degradation products are not simply biomarkers, they're inflammatory molecules that drive um, uh, inflammatory communication with the synovium. And that creates a vicious cycle producing more of those chemokines, cytokines. So we really need to think about osteoarthritis as a disease of the entire joint and pay more attention to subchondral bone and to the synovium, especially in, in the context of synovial-released uh, inflammatory proteins, the DAMPs, the alarmins, uh, and also complement proteins. Um, and we need to think about how some of those matrix degradation products are actually pro-inflammatory. There's emerging evidence that some of the breakdown products of collagens and proteoglycans can actually drive inflammation in addition to being biomarkers of degradation products. Another thing which is interesting to me is the osteophyte. Obviously, the osteophyte uh, is associated with disease progression and with pain, but it doesn't start as the osteophyte. It actually starts as the chondrophyte. And nobody really knows the pathway and the pathogenesis that makes a chondrophyte an osteophyte. We don't know enough about the molecular mechanisms involved. So there's plenty of research that we need to do in this area. Another point I want to make, and Alberto, thank you for your presentation on the osteoarthritis phenotypes. I'd like to add a little bit more information to this topic. There's emerging evidence that osteoarthritis is not just a, a homogeneous disease of articular cartilage. It's a heterogeneous disease involving all the joint tissues. And there's low-grade inflammatory involvement um, in addition to complement proteins. There's multiple uh, etiologies and emerging phenotypes. Of course, there's evidence of some cartilage-specific or synovium-specific changes. There's evidence of metabolic and inflammatory changes that are systemic. So we published this a couple of years ago, and we have really thinking about the contribution of uh, metabolism and immunometabolism to the to the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis. This area is way ahead in rheumatoid research, but it looks like in, in osteoarthritis, cells are also impacted in terms of uh, metabolic function. We've, we've explored this area further, and we've, we've got some ideas about dividing the phenotypes into four groups. We have the age-related and systemic phenotypes. We have the extra-articular phenotypes, the secondary phenotypes are a consequence of uh, crystal disease or unresolved, uh, so, sorry, previously resolved autoimmune uh, arthritis, but of particular interest to your community, to this group of individuals working in your society, is the intra-articular phenotypes. The articular cartilage, the synovitis-driven phenotype, the subchondral bone-driven phenotype, and of course, let's not forget the meniscus um, in, um, in the uh, knee joints. 
Okay, a little bit of revision for you. George Ehrlich was the advisor uh, on osteoarthritis to the World Health Organization. He actually published a paper back in 1975, I believe it was, 1975, suggesting that osteoarthritis has a very important inflammatory component. He looked at a cohort of postmenopausal women and he showed that they have evidence of inflammatory osteoarthritis. We don't cite and read these classic papers often enough, and I think we need to highlight the importance of the class classic literature to our students and fellows. Also, he's, he's written uh, articles about the importance of inflammatory osteoarthritis, and there's been, since his death uh, in 2014, there's been uh, s several additional papers uh, about his work. So I think we really need to take, give some credit to his work. But how common is, uh, is inflammation and osteoarthritis? This paper was published a number of years ago, but they did a very elegant study looking at um, biomarkers in normal serum, in osteoarthritis serum, uh, osteoarthritis synovial fluid, as well as RA serum and synovial fluid. And of course, the osteoarthritis serum uh, is not as inflammatory, as you can probably see here. It's not as inflammatory as... RA serum, but when you look at the synovial fluid, you see there's very, very similar hot spots in OA synovial fluid and RA synovial fluid. They're not the same patterns, but when you look at osteoarthritis synovial fluid, there's much more of an inflammatory profile. We need to think about this and really think uh, more carefully about studying this, uh, the proximal tissues and, and fluids. So is this a distinct phenotype in some patients, or is it a disease stage in most or all osteoarthritis patients? I would favor the former because I don't think you're going to have synovitis in all patients. I happen to have osteoarthritis myself in, a, in my left knee, and three years ago I had an effusion. The pain was pretty bad, and I had synovitis as well. But it comes and goes, and in some people it just disappears. And I think it's a it's a transient occurrence, and we need to think about the fact that inflammation and synovitis can be a, a transient event in, in some OA patients. I was hoping that uh, Raquel would give uh, an overview of the biomarkers, but she focused on rheumatoid. So Raquel, with Raquel's permission, I'll just go through this slide. Um, there's evidence of serum IL-6 being associated with pain in the early stages of uh, osteoarthritis in kelgren lorentz 2 graded, uh, but not in advanced stages 3 to 4. There's, of, there's also synovial fluid and plasma CD1-4, which, which is an inflammatory macrophage marker, positively associated with knee pain severity. And the macrophage markers CD1-6-3 and CD14 have also been Im implicated in radiographic OA severity. So we are now thinking more about those markers of uh, inflammatory cells and um, macrophage involvements from the synovium. So I think this is probably good news for, for, this, for this community that OA researchers are starting to think outside of the box. And of course, histopathology of the synovial membrane changes in osteoarthritis. It's not the same aggressive panis that you would find in rheumatoid arthritis, but there are, of course, um, uh, in the presence of Dr. Fonseca, I would say that I'm no expert in histopathology, but clearly his work over many years has highlighted that uh, this uh, is an important area we need to think about. Synovitis is important for neosteoarthritis. It could be a precursor of the disease, especially when the synovitis uh, is consequence of an earlier effusion, maybe secondary to a bone marrow lesion. Of course, there's the possibility of uh, Hoffa synovitis contributing to this. So we really need to think about moving away from some of those classical biomarkers of cartilage breakdown to some of the markers of synovial inflammation. Because if we can identify better biomarkers, then we can guide, be guide better drug development and also uh, develop better strategies for intraarticular injections. So people can benefit from them earlier. Of course, when it comes to imaging, we can use classical radiography to look at cartilage loss. And this is still the gold standard, which we hope will be changed soon with MRI. Um, looking at cartilage volume in a kind of a static way, but also thinking about inflammatory volume. What happens to the joint uh, during inflammation, and can we measure and quantify that? What, so what comes first? Is it, um, is it inflammation? 
Is it the chicken or the egg? In this study, they looked at uh, the osteoarthritis initiative cohort, and they looked at 355 subjects in these, and they looked at individuals who developed radiographic OA before a 48-month uh, visit. They were matched one-to-one -one with sex, age, and uh, contralateral knee radiographic status with a control knee, and they found that Hoffa's synovitis and effusion synovitis uh, prior to the incident of radiographic OA is definitely associated with um, increased inflammation. You can also use magnetic resonance imaging, um, dynamic um, enhanced contrast imaging to look at that inflammation, especially looking at uh, peripatilla peri uh, synovitis and M uh, MRI, conventional MRI, doesn't allow you to, to highlight this. So you really need to think about using, if you want to use uh, MRI, you need to think about using contrast agents to, to highlight those inflammatory changes. Or you can use this newly uh, introduced quantification method, DEMRIC, which is a DC MRI quantification method, and it allows you to correlate inflammatory changes and histological changes with um, synovitis, and there's some published evidence of this as well. So hopefully these will become non-invasive ways to do this in the future. Um, I'm probably in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip this slide. Okay. In this study, they looked at uh, synovitis and um, they wanted to investigate the association between periarticular synovitis, again with DCMRI, and pain, and they found that there's an association, um, and overall DCMRI as a technique was uh, re reproducible and showed good correlations with pain scores. So I think in the future we're going to see more of this uh, quantitative um, inflammatory MRI technique. And of course, um, we, we've already had uh, references to this very nice study by Dr. Humby and her colleagues. I think in osteoarthritis, we don't really think about the cellular and molecular taxonomy of synovitis. This is why in rheumatoid, they're years ahead of us, because the cellular and molecular signatures will allow them to define the molecular endotypes. And for us, we have some catching up to do to think about those molecular endotypes in osteoarthritis. So for us, we have a fair bit of work to do, but obviously with the um, tissue banks that are being developed, we should be able to do that. Uh, I think this was mentioned earlier in Dr. Fonseca's presentation. I won't go through this. Simply, I will say that if you have a good bank and you've taken synovial biopsies, you can go beyond what's currently available with uh, proteomics and uh, transcriptomics. You can even look at microRNAs, such as some of the microRNAs that have been associated with osteoarthritis. MicroRNA 210, for example, is well associated with uh, progression of osteoarthritis. So I'd like to conclude that the future of osteoarthritis research is, and treatment is intra-articular. All of the new and emerging drugs are uh, intra-articular injections, whether they are uh, cell and uh, gene-mediated or recombinant growth factors or uh, uh, synthetic corticosteroids or this new anti-senolytic drug that Unity Biotechnology will introduce to us more at the ACR uh, meeting in um, November at, uh, in Atlanta. All of these are intra-articular treatments. Nobody's going to suggest we eat them. Intra-articular treatments are particularly suitable for those intra-articular phenotypes. So if we can identify those patients who have the intra-articular phenotypes, we can target them better. And I think in the next presentation, we're going to hear more about how that drug development uh, process works. Uh, we must exploit opportunities to develop novel products. That's what patients want, patients need. Uh, our chairman says the earliest application is always the best. I completely agree with that statement. Um, synovial biopsies can really enrich the biobanks. So um, I suppose we should find some money to send one of our people to, to Dr. Fonseca's lab to learn this very complicated but, but important technique. Um, I completely agree that synovial biopsies are also where the biomarkers uh, are hiding and we need to identify them. And hopefully we'll learn about um, future approaches to how we can use those biomarkers to inform drug development and identification of new targets. Thank you.
for your attention.